Hello and welcome to the Black Tower. I'm your host, your guide, your brother, Sorcerer Armana Sewell. All right, so today I wanted to do a video on the wisdom of the Chaldeans. Now, what's so important about the Chaldeans? Well, the Chaldeans, whether through Simon Necronomicon, through history, any of this other sort of thing, they were masters of celestial knowledge. When the planets turn, constellations, all this other stuff. Now, why is this so important to magic? Whether you're talking about the Simon Necronomicon, or you're talking about high magic, uh, low magic. I mean, holy crap, you're a witch. Even you watch the planets. Ain't that cool as shit. And the changing of seasons and times. All right. So, <laughs> oh, I would love to say that this is all me, that I just like, you know, I did a lot of research and a lot of studying. But I'm just going to be honest with you. I, uh, I actually, I got this uh, channel to me from my own watcher. And anybody out there who has a watcher, the only thing I can tell you is befriend them. Watchers know everything. They didn't just listen and watch everything throughout the eons. They literally know everything. So, befriend a watcher today. Pick up your own handy dandy Necronomicon. Do the three in one watcher conjuration. Get you a brand new bowl. Put the three symbols, the Ara, the Aga, and the Bandar on the side of it. And just begin the summoning. Call it. Uh, there is a prayer in uh, somewhere in the Simon Necronomicon where it talks about that I said a friendly God over my head. And I think it's in one of the. Uh, uh, wow, drawing a blank here. Uh, one of the banishings or whatever like that. Uh, but it it doesn't really matter about all where what it says and all this. But uh, the concept is is that the watcher is a font of knowledge to draw from when befriended, treated properly, and made a part of yourself. It literally. Will tell you anything you want to know. Here's a trick, though, to a watcher, though. You got to ask. Because I ain't just going to, like, you know, offer up knowledge or information. You got to ask. Now, without further ado, let us get back to this. All right. So, first off, to all my new viewers out there, hell and welcome to the Black Tower. I am your host, your guide, your brother, the sorcerer, Armana Soul. Uh, all right. Way, way to everybody else, though. That's cool. Uh, all right, so so going with the change of my channel and everything else, uh, what I wanted to actually do, not necessarily bring out the sinister and the dark and foreboding and stuff, no, but as we all know, the darkness and the sinister is nothing more than your shadow, and your shadow is your true form, your true self. It's where all your secrets lie. It's who you really, really are. So bringing this up is just bringing out the real me. All right, so without further ado, let's get on with this. All right, so the Chaldeans, they knew a lot about the stars, planets, and the changing of seasons and times and all this other stuff. And a lot of what we know today in astronomy is based on their knowledge. Now, how can that work for us? Well, I've got a few examples I'm going to use, uh, maybe to make this simpler, easier to understand. Uh, when you were in school, or if you're in school, because I might have some young viewers, I don't know. And you've seen the globe. Usually they're in libraries or history classes. It's a globe. It's an earth. And it spins and it's got the lines and everything else. And the equator and all this, that, and the other. Well, let's go a step further. In uh, some science classes, I don't know if they'd still have them now. They did when I was going to school. Wow, that was a while back. But anywho. <laughs> oh. Uh, even if you went to uh, astronomy classes or you went to a science museum, they would have an astroglabe. An astroglabe has the sun at the center and has all the planets on these little rod things, and, and they show how they turn around the Earth, and sometimes they, all the planets would line up and blah, blah, blah around the sun. With this in mind, then let us go to the concept of a combination lock, how it turns one way, turns the other way, turns this way. If I haven't lost you yet, let me get to the crux. 
All right, so this is how it kind of works. All right, so the sun being at the center of the universe. The sun is yourself. The sun is your own secret star, your sacred star, star of self, okay? In a magical universe, this is how it works. Now, the way it was explained to me by my watcher, and I just got this like the day before yesterday, and it was really trippy because I'm sitting there going, wow, because I mean, I'm being shown pictures of how this works, and I thought it was really, really cool and well worth making a video on. Uh, in the Simon Necronomicon, in the gate walkings for the planetary gates, and then it grows eerily silent come time to work with the ancient ones, as if somebody's trying to hold you back and so forth and so on. Maybe, just maybe, the reason why is because at that point you're supposed to already have an idea, and because the reference of the knowledge of the Chaldeans yet was imperfect. Where did the knowledge of the Chaldeans go? Because history can only tell us so much. You know, oh, they can show us the science of the thing, but they can't tell us the small pieces in between that we need, that we need to make our magic pop, to make it work, to just, you know, flow freely. And this is where I'm thankful for my watcher actually explaining this to me and showing it to me. Okay, so you are the sun, you center your own universe. Now, when you've walked the Elder Gates or the Seven Planets, or if you're working with the planets, let's just say that you're not even a gatewalker yet. Let's just say that you're new to a path like uh, some of my new viewers, and I'm happy to have you here. Hopefully you can learn something. Hopefully something I say will help you. I don't know. But anyway, so let's say that these seven planets, you're a gatewalker. Let's say you're not. Let's just say that you're working with these seven planets. Now, if you're the sun, the sun does not move. But now these planets, these planets follow an elliptical path in a clockwise fashion. Hmm. Ain't that cool? Now, what's the funny thing is, is that the constellations appear to be going counterclockwise. But this is not true. And here's why. The center of yourself may be the sun, but the plane upon which you abide is the earth. And the earth is following the clockwise fashion, and it makes the constellations appear to go counterclockwise. They, like the sun, because stars are just suns, they do not move. They are immovable. They stay in the sky. Now, that's something to trip around in your head just a little bit. But that's where I came through with the combination lock. That's what that was about, to kind of give you an idea of how one goes one way, one goes the other way. So it's always based on, a, on perception. But here's the thing. The Earth may be following a clockwise pattern around the sun with you on it. And to you, the constellations are going to appear to be going counterclockwise. And as each constellation comes in overhead, because you remember in the Simon Necronomicon, the power of a star was readily available when it was directly overhead. And this is why it's so important to understand uh, just basic astronomy, just, you know, just the placement of stars and constellations and so forth and so on in the night sky, is because when these constellations are overhead, that's when their power is. Now, what's so, why, why do we care about this? Why is this important to us? Because as a gatewalker, if you are a gatewalker, or let's say you're a spiritualist and you just meditate on the constellation, it is easier to connect with that energy if it is directly over your head. So it doesn't matter what path you're following. Uh, meditation, focus, concentration, while the power is above you, is always important. This does not mean that you cannot tap into these constellational powers any time of the year, but it means that it's not going to have the prevalent power and force unless it is at season. Now, I learned year before last when I decided I was going to start the Necronomicon gatewalkings for the Elder Gods, I lucked up. And I mean luck. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Serendipitous. It's very serendipitous. Uh... The, one, the year that I actually decided, okay, I'm doing this. I'm doing the gatewalking, like Simon Necronomicon says. I looked up. I understood that timing was important. See, each planet had to be in their zenith, had to be at their peak. 
for you to make each of the planetary seals of the spirits. The seals of the planetary spirits or the elder gods themselves. It was perfect. I was, I was able to make every single seal in the exact same year. And serendipitous a little bit further. Uh, I was also able to do my gate walking at the same time, giving each seal 30 days from creation to use, like the book says, which I thought was kind of cool. Now, otherwise, you'd have to wait three or four years to be able to make all the seals. So I was really lucky that, you know, here I've been following a system for 20-something years, you know, and I'd never actually done the actual gate walking like the book said because there's so many different ways of doing this. The point behind all of this isn't what I did. The point is, is it's about time. It's about planetary alignment. It's about uh, constellational arrangement. It's about the heavens. It's about the powers that are in the heavens pouring down upon us and us as gatewalkers or practitioners, sorcerers, witches, maybe, maybe just, you know, spiritual people. It's important to understand their placement and their time has power that we can tap into to use. Now, for the gatewalker in general, uh, this video is made basically for you, but I thought I'd break it down just a little bit for the new viewers, too. All right, so all about timing. Timing, 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 timing. Why is timing so important? Well, I think I've explained why timing is so important. But now let me explain to you the wisdom of the Chaldeans of the lost knowledge, the, the, the pieces in between of why you do this and why you do that. Why was it important? And then why isn't it as important today as it was then? Because that knowledge was lost. The, the part that would be spoken or that would just be common sense for everybody? Well, because of wars and time and everything else, that knowledge was kind of lost. Hence why I'm thankful for my watcher filling in the gaps for me. All right, so check it. So what you would do if you're a gatewalker of the Simon tradition and I know I've done this thing about Hoover and Kingu and all this other stuff. However, those at best had knowledge, yes, but they were imperfect knowledge. They weren't, they weren't presented with the detail that you would actually need for this. All right. So the reason why it was important for timing and the reason why the Simon Necronomicon tells you to leave your watcher to guard your body, here's why. Okay, so you're sitting there and... Well, we're, we're going to use uh, Hoover, Taurus, as an example. Its ruling planet is Venus. Its exalted planet is the moon. So what you would do is in the day of Venus, because that's the ruling planet, which would be a Friday, in the hour of the moon. Hmm. See, that's going, to take some, that's going to take some research. You're going to have to figure out which hour it, from sunrise sunset to sunrise that the moon's power is technically generally speaking this is about uh, i think it's three three four times i don't know however many but anyway you would find the hour of the moon and what you would do is you would want to invoke the power of venus which is inanna so you would make prayers and some fumigations unto Inanna because you have to honor these powers first. Then, and, and this would be during the day, and in the hour of the moon, you would break out the gate of the moon. The power of Venus will be directing you, but you will be stepping forth through the moon gate to reach the constellation. This all must be done in, an, in the space of an hour. I honestly, I would not go over 40 minutes. So I'd have all this prepared way beforehand. Uh, and I'll get to why you should do that here in a minute. Uh, so anyway, so day of Venus, Friday. Make your prayers and supplications unto Inanna. To direct and guide you and to infuse yourself with the energy of the planet of Venus. Because it is the ruling planet of Taurus. And then, in the hour of the moon, break out the moon gate seal. Make prayers unto Nana, the moon god, to direct you along your path to 
the gates of the constellation of Taurus. Because it's important that you speak your intent, your will, your desire. That way the energy is being built up inside you. And then you would take the constellation of Taurus, the 11 stars, the, their design. You'd visualize them most perfectly. And unlike the gates where you're pulled up to it in, previous, in the previous gate walking rituals, you are going to be projecting yourself by a force of will, by... For some people it's easy, some people it's not. It just depends on whatever it takes to get you there to where you can go. And if it helps any, call upon Hoover by the power word, Kakab U Alap Shameh, that she may in, that she may guide you to her star. Now, this will pull you up, okay, if you're not able to project. And if it doesn't happen right away, don't worry, don't get scared, just keep, keep on with the prayers to her. Because where it says that the gods are far away and forgetful, there are times like this where you're waiting on them to respond to you, where you're like, I wonder if they've even heard me. And this gives lenience to where that came from, but they haven't forgot. But anyway, you'll be pulled up. And you can commune with Hoover, and you can learn from Hoover, and all this other stuff. Now, the reason why I said you need to keep this short, you need to keep it at about a 40 minutes, so it means you need to be doing your sprinkling your salt around the room 60 times. You need to, you need to do the Anushu Bam Gig Epsua Kisha Giga Garshagda Sisi Amaradaya with the bread and the honey offering, or the bread and the salt offering. Excuse me, bread and honey was for the culture of the day. <laughs> My bad. So the bread and the salt, burning it. And then you would uh, summon the fire god, summon your watcher, do the four quarters, uh, do your prayers unto Anana to infuse the circle ritual space. Maybe walk the, the circumference of your circle, the number of times is equal to Anana's number, which is 15 in the Simon Necronomicon. And then you would place the seal of the gate of the moon there. You would then call upon Nana to guide you beyond the gate using the power word that was given to you during your gate walking. You get pulled through the gate immediately, immediately visualize the constellation of Taurus and either make a calling to Hoover by the power of the words Kakab U Alap Shameh. Be projected, be pulled up, commune, do your workings with her. Uh, you can communicate, you can ask her uh, easy ways to connect with her, so forth and so on. You know, if she will guide you during during her reign or, you know, whatever. Whatever it is that you need to work with her over. Usually I work with, uh, you know, teach me your ways. Teach me what I need to know about your powers that abide within myself. Because, see... So many times when you call upon gods or goddesses, deity, spirit, anything like that, everybody wants something. Well, I do too, but what I want is actual perfect knowledge of these beings and what they represent and what part of myself is like them and how I can work with it, through it, and how it can strengthen me and make me a more capable practitioner. But you do whatever you want to do. Now then, then you want to thank Hoover. You want to see the constellation fade black, fall back until you're standing before the gate of the moon. Thank Nana for having guided you to the gate. Fall back further to your circle. Thank Nana for guiding. You want to seal the gate with the elder sign of the Simon Necronomicon, which is the dot line. Well, hold on, dot like this. I don't know. It looks like a. You can't miss it. The R is the star. Uh, then you have the Aga, and then you have the Bandar. Well, the Aga is the elder sign. It's the middle one. Uh, I don't remember what page off the top of my head, but for those of you who uh, have the book, you know what I'm talking about. 
if you want to seal it with the sign of the elder's sign, and you want to say, the ritual has been completed, the ritual is done, I stand before thee and seal thee, O gate of Venus. And then you want to thank the spirits and everything else. And then you want to begin the closing down your circle and everything else. Releasing your, uh, releasing the four quarters, whatever. Uh, releasing your watcher. Uh, releasing the fire god, so forth and so on. Then you want to do the uh, thing of the crown of Anu. So forth and so on. Uh, my other videos give all that. Uh, now here's why you want to do this in a certain time now. Because... When it says that the watcher stands back to watch you to make sure nothing comes in, the reason why is because this timing is so delicate. Now, whether you're aware of it or not, you're, you are stepping between time and space magically, spiritually speaking. Your soul is, your spirit, whatever you want to call it. You are projecting your consciousness out. Now, if you were to stay past the time, you know what happened. As time passed, the gate that you came through would close and it would take another 28 to 30 days before that time, before the gates would be right. Wow, Chaldean knowledge right there. Timing is everything. You can enter in through the door that is open, but when the door closes, sometimes you can't come back out until its time has come again. This is why in uh, Simon Necronomicon, this is why in magic in general, this is why timing is so important. Because, well, in this instance, you don't want to be locked out 28, 30 days. Because it's going to, you're, you're not going to be become possessed or anything like that, but you're just going to feel so out of sorts and you're just going to be blah and you're going to be like, what the hell is wrong? And everything else. Well, if you've done this in the season of Taurus and it passes, you're going to be feeling like crap for over a year until Taurus comes back into power. Do you see what I'm saying? This, this is the whole thing. This is why they tell you. That, that's why all these things are in here. Uh, I've said before, this, this system is, it's, it's a delicate, dangerous system if you don't know what you're doing. And there are very few gods on it. So timing here is very important. You go in and you come out in the time allotted. Because if you think that a spirit that has been kept too long can get angry, can you imagine the damage you can do to yourself if you stay past a time and you cannot return? Same with these spirits. You know, when you call them in their hour, in their time, and in their day, and all this other stuff, they only stay, you know, you, you don't want to keep them for an exact hour because, you know, the gates don't close, and so they're kind of stuck with you. And that can make anybody a little ill. That's like having to stay at somebody's house that you're like, oh, I just went to go see somebody for a few and end up having to stay there a day and a half because all the roads are flooded out. And you can't get out. I don't know if any of you have ever had a situation like that, but my cousins have. <laughs> yeah, they got stuck behind the wife's house for about overnight part of the day because they could not get back to their home because Two roads, one was washed out, and the other one, water was over the bridge, so they just they couldn't take a chance of getting back. This is timing. See, if they had left in time, it would have been all right. They could have got back. Instead, they had to sit here, and, you know, and they weren't comfortable, and they were, you know, they, they, we're, they were being treated hospitably and all. But you get my point. It's, it's more of an irksome thing, I guess you could say, and it's not that they don't like me and my wife. It's not like that. It's just, you know. When, when you want to be at your home, you want to be at your own home. You don't want to be at somebody else's home. Well, you can imagine that these spirits are much the same way, you know. You call them, oh, they'll come. They got no problem with that. You know, you give them offerings, talk to them, you know, do, do whatever you're going to do. But allow them to go back in the space of their time so that they can return to their home, their abode, in the time that they can go back through. And I don't think it's stated enough in magical practices why it is that it's said that you do not keep a spirit past their time. Uh, in certain uh, certain high magic, uh, there's like a list of tables of the spirits 
of the hours of the days and all this other stuff. Well, the system is no different, but where did that stuff come from? From the Chaldeans. And the Chaldeans understood that a spirit was connected to a planet or this, that, or the other, and was over certain hours and all this other stuff. But they were not to be called until their hour, and they were to be allowed to go back before the time had expired so that they could go back through their gates because our gates would only open at certain times. And if we treat the system much the same way, we bring back into it the science of occultism with the spiritual practice of being able to commune, work with spirits to the magical, competent workings of a practitioner. And this is the three and one, the one and three, and it's so wonderful. Well, I wish each and every one of you peace, blessings, and power. Hope I didn't bore you. Hope I actually made sense to you. Until next time.